If you're in the market for a big set of spindle turning chisels that can let you do anything imaginable, better watch this first because I'll save you some money. Intro! Hey guys, Paul here and uh, I get the question a lot, what is the minimum tool set that I need to get started in spindle turning if I decide I want to go down the traditional tool path? So first you have to decide, am I going to go carbide or traditional? A lot of us end up doing both uh, eventually, um, but I'm going to focus on spindle turning only, so not bowl turning, uh, and traditional tools for this video. I do love carbide tools and I recommend them as a starting point. I'm going to do another video on that uh, later, but for now I'm going to focus on the minimum tool set that I think you need for spindle turning. And just on the, on the chisel aspect of it, of course you need a lathe and a face shield and all the accessories like that. But I'm going to focus on the, uh, the really the four minimum tools that I think you need and one more for extra credit. So I'm going to cover five tools. And with those, you can do just about anything uh, within spindle turning. Uh, so first, the first one up is the, uh, the roughing gouge. So you need one of these because that's the first step. I, I've chucked up a two by two uh, by probably foot long or so chunk of ash here. And the first thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take this roughing gouge and I'm going to just make it round. So the roughing gouge is going to be a kind of a heavier gauge uh, steel. This is about an inch wide, pretty a uh, pretty robust piece of steel on there, ground at a pretty flat angle, and it's just a kind of a a workhorse just to get it round. You're not worried about leaving a perfect surface finish on here, that's going to be for other tools after the fact. So let me just uh, show you quickly what you can do uh, with, the, with the rough and gouge and kind of how that comes into play. Now when you're just getting started with the rough and gouge, the work is pretty thumpy and that is just because you're knocking off corners so you're turning way more air than wood at first and every time that wood comes around it's going to thump on the uh, roughing gouge. Now the, I mentioned that it had a blunt nose angle and that is really because you want to knock off rather than shear off those corners. If you're shearing at this point uh, you're going to be splintering the wood and it gets dangerous. You could have one of those splinters come off and it's spinning pretty fast and that thing could lodge in your hand. So uh, a blunt nose angle is a, an appropriate uh, way to grind that tool. Now all you're doing at this point is just trying to make it round. So what you want to do is check it periodically and to do that you're going to just set the gouge on top of the wood and listen for thumps and if it's still thumping you have more work to do. All right, the next one up is a spindle gouge. Now I'm going to just cheat a little bit and tell you that I'm going to cover two spindle gouges. I like to have one larger one and one smaller one. First one is a uh, half inch, half inch spindle gouge. Gets, gives you the ability to shape uh, larger concave and convex uh, things. You can turn beads with this. You can do just gentle sweeping curves and so forth. So this is a great tool for a lot of the shaping that you're going to do in spindle turning. Let me just give you a quick demonstration of where that fits in. Now I probably spend more time in spindle turning with a half inch spindle gouge in my hand than any other tool. It just does most of what I need to do. It's kind of the workhorse in my spindle turning. I love it for these big sweeping actions that you can do and it just leaves behind a very nice surface finish as long as you have a good uh, sharp grind on it. It does what it's supposed to do. Alright next up is the smaller uh, detail uh, spindle gouge. So this is a 3 8 inch bar and I measure it when I say half inch and I say three eighths inch, I'm measuring the bar uh, of the uh, of the tool, the, just the the large diameter of the uh, overall tool itself. 
rather than the flute. It's confusing in, uh, in turning when some manufacturers measure the flute size, some measure the bar size. That may be more applicable in bowl turning than a spindle, but I'm just measuring the, the size of the bar. So this is a 3 8 inch. Doesn't sound like much difference from a half inch, but it's a huge difference. So it's gonna have the same functionality, but just on a smaller detail. Um, I don't use these two interchangeably. You could do, you can do some pretty fine detail work with the, with the half inch, but when you really wanna get in there and make fine details, I love having this 3 8 inch gouge. So let me just give you a quick demonstration of that. All right, same kind of idea as with the half inch spindle gouge, but now we're just working in a tighter space. I normally slow down the RPM a little bit when I'm working with the smaller tool. It gives me a little bit more control, especially when getting into these uh, smaller nooks and crannies on the piece. But just defining the outline of the beads in this case and then just rolling them over uh, and it can just get a very nice crisp detail and if you want to get down in there a little bit deeper you're able to do that without as much interference because it's such a narrow tool all right and then finally uh, a parting tool now i'll admit that i have probably four or five different parting tools different styles different uh, thicknesses and i do use uh, some of the other ones. But if I only had one, I would choose this really thin one. The reason that I really like this and use this one the most is that when you're parting off a piece at the, at the end of the project, this is going to do it the quickest. It's going to remove uh, the least amount of material and just be the most efficient. Now, if you wanted to round, if you wanted to turn a tenon or something like that, just a large flat uh, space, you could use this and do it in smaller increments. I'd rather go grab a wider one for that type of work. So if I, you know, if you might want to get two of these, one narrow, one wide, but if you only get one, I really like this narrow one. So let me just give you a quick demonstration. Not much to show here, but uh, just a, it's a simple, purposeful tool. Now look how easily this tool plunges into that hardwood, just all the way to the core, nothing to it. And here I'm just creating a little tenon uh, which you can do easily, even with such a thin tool. And then finally, I'd say for extra credit, if you want to add a fifth tool to your arsenal, uh, this is a skew and a skew chisel. And uh, there are different uh, sizes and shapes of these. Um, I have a couple that I like. This is one, this is about an inch wide. Uh, and it is ground, the, the tip is ground at a skewed angle. Uh, this is the most challenging of all the spindle turning tools to use. And again, it's not essential, but what you'll find is that you can create a surface with this that is better than you can create uh, with sandpaper. It, if you want to push yourself and, and uh, advance your skills in the world of uh, spindle turning, Get yourself a, a skew chisel and, and practice, practice, practice. It's scary because you're going to get catches along the way as you're learning. Uh, once you understand kind of the fundamentals of how to grind it and how to uh, approach the wood in a safe way, you won't get those catches anymore. But it's kind of scary and daunting at first. So let me just give you a quick demo uh, using the skew chisel. With the skew, it's really a matter of just finding the right approach angle so that you're shearing wood at the at the correct angle. And you'll find that uh, once you find that sweet spot, it just kind of floats across the wood. Very straightforward uh, once you get the hang of it. Now just a quick wipe with some water reveals the nice surface quality left behind by the skew, comparing that to the rough uh, from the roughing gouge. Right, that wraps it up. Now the main purpose for this video is to, to show you that it's inexpensive to get started, you only need a few tools, and to really discourage you from going out and buying a set, a starter set. Uh, there are, you know, some of those starter sets contain tools that you will never use. They will have their factory grind on them all the way through your entire uh, wood turning years. So just, I, I encourage you to just pick out good quality tools, just the ones you need, Add to your collection carefully, 
as you run into a situation where you need another tool. But if you take that approach, you won't have an accumulation of tools that you don't need. I've thinned mine out and I still have way more than I need. So let me know if you have questions. I'll give you links, uh, not necessarily to these exact tools. Uh, some of these, uh, I don't even know what manufacturer they are. They're, you know, I've rehandled uh, the skew chisel, for example. But I'll give you links to what I feel are good representative uh, options. You can find numerous options out there, you know, at woodwork and specialty stores and online retailers, Amazon, anywhere. There's a there's a sea of options out there. So let me know if you have questions. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. See you soon. Take care.